What's going on, guys? Thank you guys for tuning in to 8 Connection TV. Subscribe, baby. Also, check out my two new channels, 8 Connection TV 2 and ACTV Games. When you go through those channels, subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. All right. What's going on, everybody out there in YouTube land? I am Wesley. Thank you for tuning in to 8 Connection TV, the one channel where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences. And it's kind of weird because he's like staring me down in my face as I'm uh, speaking into the camera. Can you look that way for me? Yeah. <laughs> I am here. Can you introduce yourself to, Hi, to the audience? Terrell Alvin McCraney. Terrell Alvin McCraney, born 1980. You're an 80s baby, <laughs> like myself. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Tell everybody your, your zodiac sign because people like to know these things about people that I interview. I am a Libra, Aquarius rising with an Aquarius moon. So, what are the greatest qualities of a Libra with an Aquarius? Libras, well, it's a little different when you have an Aquarius rising, but yeah, Libras are, um, you know, fair and just and uh, love beauty. Okay, that's, that's simple yet, yet nice. Yeah, elegant. <laughs> um, do do Libras find themselves on the creative aspect of life more so than than any other? Not more than any other sign. I think the mo when you talk about astrology, you get into the uh, uh, the, the mythological origins of it. So you know, Libra is ruled by Venus, and Venus, of course, is uh, connected to beauty, and beauty is connected to art. And um, just, so it's justice in a way. I mean, social justice often takes takes shape in sort of performance, right? The way we right. perform in life. So you know, we have a leaning towards it. But you can find you know artists in every in every sign. Pisces is thought to be the most creative because they they rule the emotional world and the the the, the world of intu intuition. So they they bring what they feel on the inside to the outside. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. So you're a Floridian. <laughs> um, I just moved to Atlanta from Florida, and I didn't really have a good time <laughs> in Florida, to say the least. I'm no, sorry. it's fine. Uh, but growing up in the 80s, myself as an 80s baby, what was, in, in, in a brief statement, what was your childhood like for you growing up in Florida? You see, you see the movie Moonlight? That's exactly what it was. <laughs> a good two thirds of it, yeah. Okay. I mean, some parts of it, I mean, we didn't show everything, but there is a lot of it that was exactly like that. I mean, there were no, we missed the hurricanes. Uh, we missed, um, you know, missed when I went to uh, art school. But yeah, a lot of it was like that. Did you watch cartoons? Did you play with action figures when you were younger? What did you I do? I watched cartoons. I watched Jim and the Holograms. Okay. I watched He-Man. Uh, I watched Voltron, X-Men. And then I kind of aged out of cartoons uh, after that. Um, I did not play with anybody's action figures or dolls. Uh, I, I grew plants. I was like, okay, interesting. Yeah, I, had a, I have a very green thumb. Nice. What do you? Um, what did you like most about your childhood, and what did you hate most about your childhood? I liked solitude, actually. To be fair, <laughs> I liked being by myself. I could imagine worlds. Um, I did not like when I was forced to sort of like be in large groups of people. Um, I still don't like those things, so I would say it's the same. It's okay. true now. Okay. Um, you attended New World School of Arts in Miami. You I went did. to Yale and DePaul. Um, when did you discover that school and the arts was your thing? I don't know if school was ever my thing, which is weird because I'm a professor. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Let me just say uh, the arts were more so my thing, and arts education have always been a part of that. Um, the arts, you know, granted me uh, the ability to to sort of frame or order chaos. Interesting. Um, yeah. So you know, the world is chaotic. The life we live is is is, is in constant motion. Right. But um, art does you know like a painting you take a moment of that life and you put a frame around it um, and performance art particularly allowed us to take moving things and sort of put a frame around it just capture it for a second um, and that just allowed me to think in a way or feel in a way that felt connected to the to the world okay some people don't know that you've created some popular plays um, I'm gonna read down the list here. Um, <laughs> Head of Passes, Choir Boy, American Trade, Wig Out, uh, Without Sin, Run More Than Run, The Brother Sister Plays, um, and the inspiration for Moonlight was a drama school project entitled uh, Moonlight 
In Moonlight, Black Boys Look Blue. Which of these projects was your favorite? Which three? If you I, have I, get, I get to do three? Yeah. Um, easy. Uh, the, in the Brother Sister Plays, there's a play called Red and Brown Water. That's my favorite. Okay. Um, which we did right here in Atlanta first. That was at the Alliance Theater. That was one of my first plays to be produced here. Um, we also did a play here that I really love called Choir Boy. We did that here. And then the other, the third of the plays that I love the most is Head of Passes, which we have not done here, um, but we did in New York with the incredible, graceful Felicia Rashad. Nice. Where does In Moonlight Black Boys Look Blue come from? What was the inspiration? The title or the actual piece? <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay. Well, this is supposed to be short answers. <laughs> um, the, the title comes from a, 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 some of the dialogue in the script. There is a story that um, the mentor tells to the, the, the young person of how he got his name of Blue. Um, which is that, you know, a lady in the community saw him running around at night under the moonlight and she said, you're going to catch it on your skin because in the moonlight, the black boys, they look blue. So I'm going to call you blue. So she named him blue from that. Okay. Um, and so that's how, that's, that's where that title comes from. And I also, it also was something that like happened to me that when, when I was younger, people, uh, I ran around in the moonlight all the time. <laughs> I was like a really wild kid. And, uh, um, and I never had on these shoes, so they would be like, you look Ichi. And you're like, you right. have no shoes on, you ain't got no clothes on, and you run around in the moon. Um, and so, you know, they were just, people call me black. Um, and, and I was, my brother's father, who uh, the, ca the character Juan is based on, was named Blue. Okay. So, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to shift gears a little bit. I'm going to ask you a direct, very direct and blunt question. Okay. How is being openly gay in Hollywood? Uh, how is being openly gay in Hollywood? I don't know, because I don't really, I mean, I work in Hollywood, clearly, but not as exclusively as some people, you know? Okay. Um, I, I mostly work in the theater, which is, you know, pretty good to be openly gay in. And also, again, I don't really socialize that much, so... <laughs> Being gotcha. openly gay has its has its, its so it uh, hasn't affected you directly. It, you here here I can tell you ways that it has affected me. So okay. if I write work like in Moonlight, um, and when we first did it, when Barry first Barry Jenkins, the director of uh, Moonlight, uh, started working on the project, started trying to cast it, um, we reached out to some people, um, people who you know. We wouldn't say are superstars, but they you know have a name in the business. Okay, um, and a lot of them turn the work down right because they didn't want to do a piece that had to do they didn't do it want to do an independent film first of all that had to do with uh with being gay gotcha yeah. and even if they were openly gay um and so i remember i, I just i mean that that happens often you know right. have people sort of right. move and there were other people you know um we had some really cool people who were like nah i just don't have the time to do it i would love to do it i okay. would love to be engaged with it but there were people who literally were like nah I'm trying to get into music or I'm in music and this might mess up my career or you know I'm trying to do this next thing and this is and you know um, we don't have to name names but, right you know when that happens that those are those are the effects of being open about your truth is that some people can't tell that truth they can't be a part of it gotcha when did you know that you were different in terms of your sexual orientation Mm, that's another tough. You don't. What are these? Easy, where are the easy questions? I don't ask easy questions. I oh, guess. Okay. <laughs> Thank God he's so cute. He's got these little dimples. He's <laughs> like I just. Um, you know the. For me, the spectrum of sexuality has always been a little hard to come by. I mean, when I was younger, people identified me before I identified myself. So right. people said I was gay, or said, or called me names, which I had to then sort of ask you know, my parents, what that meant, what, you know, what, what is that about? And so for a long time, I knew I was different because other people could see it. So, you know, when everybody else is telling you you're different, you kind of go, okay. But I didn't necessarily tie that to intimacy. Um, in fact, for a long time, because once I did start having sexual attraction, this was way after I had even been identified as gay, I was sexually attracted to both men and women and still am. Okay. Um, and so it took me a long time to sort of to sort of formally say that I was gay. I always said I was queer or different or weird okay. um, or other, but it but I didn't. And it took until college till I was like, oh, I'm I'm gay because I want to be in a relationship with a man, if that makes right. sense. 
Um, I didn't want to be in a relationship with women. I had had sex with women. I had sex with, I'm telling all my business on I had had sex with men and I had sex with women um, and enjoy both. Right. <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure if I did it today, I would still enjoy both. But um, I wanted to be in a relationship. I wanted to build a life with a man. And so to, in my mind, that made me gay. Makes sense. And I, I, I would agree to that as well. If you could take all of the gayness away from you, would you? And why? Um, the gayness? Which part? Which part of the gayness? You uh, being <laughs> in love with men and wanting to have, you know. Oh, no. Nah. I mean, wanting to be in love with somebody is not something I want to take away from nobody. Like, nah. Okay. Nah. I mean, the if, if the, if, like, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, what exactly are we taking away? Are we taking away that part too? Nah. I'm good. <laughs> I want to be, I like loving people. I love, I, I rarely have strong connections to people and I have, you know, um, I just I, I don't the reason have why I, friends, the reason why I ask you that question is because a lot of a lot of individuals associate the negative aspect of being gay um, as being something that's a little bit too heavy to bear. Yeah. And if they could take it away from themselves and and be just heterosexual, then they wouldn't have to worry about the negative energy that that's placed on being gay. So that's why I ask that question. Pe people hate you for for something. Okay. They're gonna get. Okay. You, they're gonna. They're gonna not like you for something. Right. You know. So. Right. If that. If you. You know. It. Sure. Would we like to remove the systematic oppression of any any persons who right. are marginalized? Absolutely. If that's what you're asking, absolutely. Let's do that. But. People. People, and we know this to be true, just by looking at historical uh, documents. Or, people will always find something to not like some people about. Definitely. Uh, we can all. Everybody out there can agree to that. So I, I do have to say thank you oh, no for um, not only this interview, but for the creation, being a part of the creation of Moonlight, because like I stated in my review, um, that movie was a clear reflection, a depiction of things that I had gone through, especially with my mother, mm -hmm. um, and, and things that I had gone through as being a child, growing up being gay and black, mm -hmm. um, and the ghetto area, if you would. Um, how we, we know that it's a, it's a depiction of your life mm -hmm. in many ways, but how did you just decide to write this? Because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this it was a play or, or a story that you wrote quite some time ago. So the original script in Moonlight Black Boys Look Blue, I wrote uh, in 2003. My mother just died of AIDS-related complications. Okay. And um, I and I just graduated from school. I just graduated from undergrad, so um, I felt a little lost. And um, somehow that script got into that. And so I I really was just trying to put almost like if you took pictures and kind of put them in an album and try to put your life back together in that way. That's what I was doing on the page. I literally was taking images from my life and trying to put them back down and re-remember. So I remember there was a drug dealer who was really good to me and uh, he was sweet wow. to me and he you know, taught me how to ride a bike and taught me how to swim and taught me how to make salmon croquettes and you know, um, hugged me more than my own dad. And then you know, my mom, after his around and about the time that he disappeared from my life, my mom started doing drugs really heavily and I remember that started around then and it kind of kept going and then I remember, you know, I had like one friend who betrayed me at some point. Like, so I just started trying to put those in order right. um, as a 22 year old. Wow. And, um, and then I put, the, I put it away. I sort of put it away and I went to grad school. Gotcha. Um, and about 10 years after that, um, uh, Barry Jenkins. Who also who grew up in the same neighborhood as me? Right. Grew up in, and under similar circumstances, also dealt with his mother. Also dealt with drug addiction. Um, he doesn't identify as gay. He's he identifies as straight. But he you know he saw the neighborhood that we live in go from you know being a middle class neighborhood to the poverty that that exists today. And um, he got the script from my friend uh, Andrew Hevia, who works at a film company called Borscht Film Company. And then Barry started putting putting it together and thought, you know, look, we can tell this in three chapters, um, and we can expand this to show, like, you know, how what a person goes through in these events and like how they can come, how they can come out on the other side. Wow. So that not, it's not so all of it's not completely biographical, but a great deal of it is from both my life and from Barry's life. Awesome. Okay. 
How much responsibility did you have in the movie making process? Like, were you on set? No. Throughout the. Okay. <laughs> no. Nah, nah. I can barely sit in the movie theater. Really? Yeah, it's hard to watch that movie, man. Wow. It's, hard. it's beautiful. It's really beautiful, and I love it. But it's, you know, the first couple times I saw it, it, it hit me hard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was I was gonna ask you like, um, so you weren't a part of any of the film, like you were never on set at all. No, I was at there. So they literally had an office around the corner from my house. Okay. Where they were, you know, doing the business of the filming, and I went over there maybe four or five times to like see if they were okay, if they needed anything. And they, then you left. I went. Uh, listen, <laughs> Barry, Barry knew what he was doing. Right. And uh, one and then two, I just if ever you know when you were on set or any around a person who's trying to portray what they think of as your life, then they're going to keep looking to you to, for approval to see if they're doing it right. And I didn't want that kind of pressure. I wanted them to bring to it their own, which they did. I think, you know, the actors, Mahershala, Trevante, Naomi. Phenomenal um, job. Yeah. Well, they just jumped in and, and, you know, lived themselves in it rather than trying to, like, play up something that they thought was right. going to like. Right, Okay, makes sense. What scene in the movie is your favorite? If you have one, uh, my favorite two scenes. Okay. <laughs> I have two favorite scenes. Um, my favorite uh, scene is when Jarrell, who is middle Kevin, and Sharon uh, are in the stairwell, and uh, Sharon, who's played by Ashton Sanders, is looking out at you know the boys waiting on him after school, and Jarrell walks up behind him and is like, "Yo, what's up, Black?" and just starts talking and spitting game at him. He don't even know he's spitting game. He's just like telling him about he's got suspension. Suspended, almost got suspended because he was having sex with this girl in the thing. I mean, he's just going at a mile right. hour. And you can just see these two, like, living in this world that is just their own for a moment. It's just so dope. It's in the middle of everything. And if you're not, you know, if you're not paying attention, if you're just going to class, you wouldn't recognize it. But because we're listening to what we're right. saying, you, you hear them building a kind of friendship just through that. Okay. Um, and my second favorite is the scene um, when Trevante visit, visits his mom at the... Uh, at the rehabilitation center, just because Barry yeah. shot it in a way that was so similar to what it was like to visit my mom at rehab center. That's when I was like, okay, this movie is doing a lot to me yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. it was really, yeah. it's, it was hard because again, that's, I mean, the scene isn't like what happened in real life, but it's what we wish would happen. Right. Okay. Wow. Um, I have to ask you, did the entire cast get along? Uh, yeah. Most of, if not all, the actors are just heterosexual. Mm. Um, so was it weird for them playing these roles? Do you know of any instances where they were like, I don't know if I'm doing a good job, or I don't know if I am doing it right? I think I think every person who is playing a role has a bit of like humility to them, but at the same time, Barry sets an environment where there are no mistakes. And plus, we had 25 days to shoot. Wow. Right? So we shot the movie in 25 days, and some people had three days to shoot their entire scope of their film. So, wow. you know, it's like there's really no time for you to second guess. You kind of have to make some bold choices and get in there. Um, and I think, you know, the, the brave, again, the, the nervousness of like getting it right is, is cool, but when you know that you've got to get, and, the, and that's the thing that I think superseded sort of ideology about, about sexuality and all those things is that everybody got along but also believe that the story was most important. What they were telling was more important. And anybody who came to the set, um, no one brought an air of like, oh, well, I need to go get my, that's you know, awesome. I need to be in my trailer. Nobody yeah, that's that. awesome. You know, and, people, and you know, we had Naomi Harris, who is, uh, uh, was just inspector, and you know, Mahershal Ali, who was in you know, um, all kinds of TV shows up and down. I mean, they were, and, so, and Mahershal was flying back and forth from New York wow. to film at the same time. Wow. And nobody came onto that set um, with any kind of arrogance, they all came with that sort of love and generosity. So that's awesome. Yeah. When you when you look at all of the content that's out in the world for mm -hmm. the LGBTQ community, Empire, Star, Blackbird, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is lacking, or what would you like to see more of? Um, well, one, I'm very excited that all of those are there because, again, we're '80s babies, so we can remember a time when when there was nothing at all. There was nothing. I mean, at all, all, all I had to look at was Queer as Folk, and there was nothing like me on Queer as Folk. Exactly. Yeah. Or like there would be one guy who like was somebody's right. like, boy toy for a night, right? And he, like, and he was like in leather and chaps, which is right. fine if that's what you're into. <laughs> right. But like, just one image of that is not uh, is not everything. And then right. the um, so I'm, just, I'm glad that all these images are out there. I'm glad that we're doing that. 
Um, I think, you know, we, we have a responsibility to our trans brothers and sisters um, to really make sure that we, we not only represent them, but um, listen to them and to their stories and promote them and their stories, the nuances of their stories. Everything can't be, you know, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, which is great and fantastic, but, right. you know, where are the nine other stories like that? For every Blackbird, for every Moonlight, for every, you know, where is, you know, where is the, the transgender um, version of that? So, and I, I tell everyone that as well. It's like I want to see more of me. I want to feel comfortable watching, you know, gay-related content, but I want to see more of me. Um, and I feel that Moonlight definitely had that. So once again, thank you for that. No um, if there is a black Chiron or Little watching this right now, what would you say to them? I would say that your instincts are right. I would say that um, that you don't have to mask yourself in anything in order to be loved or be thought important. Um, and that if you're doing that right now, you still have time to stop. Okay. What is next for you uh, regarding the big screen? And um, congrats on becoming the chair of the playwriting, of playwriting at Yale School of Drama, mm -hmm. uh, which is coming up in July, I think. Well, I've already started. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So congrats on that. Thanks. Um, but do you see yourself doing any more um, big screen types of projects? Um, hmm. Maybe. I mean, I'm a theater artist first. Okay. I love the theater. I love to work in the theater. It's my passion. I love teaching theater artists. So, you know, um, I have like three plays I'm writing right now, at least in my head. Um, and if something happens in the big screen, that'd be great. But it's, you know, it's, it's in the mix, but it's, there's nothing in the fore right now, no. Where does the writing process start for you? Like, do you, do you just, is there a moment in time or, or a moment in life where you see a group of people or a person and that sparks an idea for you, or is it through music that sparks something for you? All of those. Oh, okay. So <laughs> All of those. You're just able to grab well, everything. Well, yeah. I think for as an artist, in order in order for us to be able to survive, you have to be able to draw inspiration from almost everything. So, you know, there's no one sort. You can get water from many sources, right? You can get it out of the ground. You can get it from the sky. You can get it, you know, from a stone if you really need to. You know, you can. Hydroponic, make it if you need to. You, can, okay. you know, there's many ways to get to get that inspiration. Well, that's awesome. So usually at the end of my interviews, which we're coming to the end of this interview, um, we don't have to like take off our shirts or anything. No. Okay. No. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd be like, dude, you got like, you got me beat. Like, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying all, to. All I'm this, trying. <laughs> you can tell Leo season is in, in effect. It's definitely. It definitely is. Because look, he's like, I got. He got like the nice shirt. It's form fitting. It's it, like. It's it's just a shirt. It's a shirt. <laughs> Sure. Like, he's got I, do, I do choose one. And, <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> I do um, something I call choose one, and I, I give you two options. Okay. <laughs> and you have to choose one. Okay. You can't say both. I can't say both. And you can't say neither. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Wait, All right. Wait, wait, let me gird myself. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, so the first one uh, hot dogs or hamburgers? Hot dogs. Uh, movies or the stage? Um, the stage. Okay. Music or movies? Music. Acting or writing? Ugh. Writing. Family or friends? Ooh. What if your family is your, are your friends? Uh, that's family then. Okay, family. All right. <laughs> Good. Uh, Miami or Los Angeles? Miami. The beach or the bed? The bed. Lover or fighter? Uh... Well, I'm ruled by Venus, lover. Okay. <laughs> Playboy or romantic? Uh, romantic. Okay. Even though that doesn't fit either, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, straight friends or gay friends? Um, I have more straight friends. All right. Shower or bath? Shower. Uh, house or condo? House. And the last one is kiss or touch? Ooh. Um, kiss. Oh, do we have to kiss now? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, you looked at me like there was something expected. I was like, oh. No. See, he's trying to be, yeah. I'm trying okay. to be what? You Nothing. Looked at, you, he said, look, look, can I do what he did? This is what he did. He was like, kiss. And I looked and I was like, cool. He was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I want to thank y'all and thank you once again. Thank y'all for tuning in. 
Um, how can people reach out to you? Do you do Instagram? Do you do Facebook? Yeah. Do you do? Um, oh, wait. My uh, IG, Instagram, is uh, Octarell again. O-C-T-A-R-E-L-L underscore again. And uh, that's my Twitter as well. All right. Um, and so, yeah. And so, if people hit you up, you're not. Are you one of those Hollywood guys that are going to be like, oh, I can't. Oh, I don't know who you are. Didn't you hit oh, me up? I mean, it's yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because you're fine. I mean, no. It's okay. That's not what it's I said. Different. That's what but it means. But we do have a mutual connection, though. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to Tim. Shout out to Tim Rich. Uh, Tim that, Rich. That Fitness. is our mutual connection. Uh, but yeah, you know, do can random people just hit you up and be like, hey, I appreciate your work. And they do. And if you do hit me up and comment on my pictures, I normally try to say something back. If I don't, it's not because I don't like you or don't care about you. It's usually because I'm in class teaching. Or, I'm trying to okay. get up like yeah. there with you. Yeah. So okay. I'm in class teaching or I'm at a lecture or some function or taking up space in a lovely home. That's what I'm doing right now. So Shout out to Adrian and Dar Daryl. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for letting us in here. They like they need to get the hell up out of here right <laughs> yeah, now. It's like we're trying to watch things. We love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to A Connection TV. Deuces.